A strong investment bank performance has boosted Credit Agricole's numbers. Capital markets and investment banking income jumped more than 50% in the fourth quarter, helping revenues to beat estimates. The bank also reported record inflows at its asset management unit. I'm very pleased to say we're joined now for an exclusive interview by the CFO of Credit Agricole, that is Jérôme Rivet. Uh, Jérôme, welcome to the programme. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. Talk to me about the capital markets business and the strength there. What is it that has driven this strong performance in capital markets? Well, actually, uh, considering the type of activities that we develop in our capital market activities, it's driven by the customer demand. And uh, uh, it, it's been the case that in 2019, all our corporate customers were indeed asking us to organize their financing operations, be it on our balance sheet or on the capital markets, securitization and bond issuances. And those activities drive the rest of our capital market activities, hedging, currencies and so on and so forth. And actually the level of activity has proven to be good across the full year, especially in the fourth quarter, but across the full year. And so if you had to attribute the strong performance to a particular part of capital markets? Well, in capital market activities, we do mostly securitization, bond issuance, hedge, uh, 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 rate hedging and currencies. And all these activities worked very well in, in 2019. So they were all stars uh, in your eyes. What is the outlook for the rest of, well, for this year then, in investment banking? C coming off uh, such strength there, what is, the, what is the outlook? Well, clearly, again, we are going to be driven by the customer demand. So it's clear that we depend on the appetite of our customers corporate customers to enter into some transactions. So it means that uh, 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 if the customer demand is not here, if the confidence is falling, we are going to suffer from a lack of revenues. But we don't feel that for the time being. Why do you think the customers were demanding so much of you last year? Because actually they wanted to take advantage of good market, uh, uh, positive market uh, 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 conditions uh, in order to secure their financing for the long term. And so we were there to organize these financing operations. So this is, is this thanks to low interest rates? Yeah, clearly this plays a role, definitely. Uh, and low interest rates are still here, so maybe this sets us up for a yeah. strong 2020 as well? Yeah. This is the prospect that we have as of now, but of course we are going to see as time passes by. As time passes by, things can change. What about French retail? Are, are there signs of recovery and optimism in the French retail well, part of the business? Uh, I'm not talking about recovery because actually the French retail operations that we have work well. We are gaining customers. We've gained more than 250,000 new customers net uh, uh, for the regional banks in, in 2019 and more than 50,000 for LCL, so more than 300,000 globally for our French retail operations. And our customers are also engaging into uh, 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 borrowing money for their homes or into uh, investing money uh, for their retirement uh, uh, schemes. So uh, the activity is working well so in the French market. What is under pressure is the level of rates by definitions, but uh, um, uh, on the scope globally of uh, Credit Agricole SA, the net interest margin represents only one third of our revenues. So that's the context. But are there things that you can do to offset the negatives associated with low interest rates and what that does to your net interest margin? Well, in 2020, we are going to benefit on a full year basis of the two uh, new tools that the ECB has put in place, the tiering mechanism that is going to help us a little bit uh, our net interest margin and also the uh, TLTR03, uh, which is uh, one of the tools that we can use to refinance the, the loan book that we have. And are you interested in expanding through M&A in the French retail space? No, actually, uh, 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 we are considering uh, 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 M&A transactions like we did in 2019 in order to develop our uh, specialized financial business lines like the asset management, like the uh, securities uh, uh, services uh, businesses. But in French retail, you know, we have such a big market share that it's not really useful to consider m and transactions. Not interested in HSBC's uh, French retail portfolio then? For example. For example. Okay. Uh, what about uh, bolstering the CET1 ratio, the, the, the balance sheet at all? Is that something that you are planning to do? Well, we are planning to do it at the level of the group where we have already by the end of last year a very high 15.9% CET1 ratio. But when it comes to the listed entity of the group, Crédit Agricole SA, we are uh, uh, far 
above actually our target in terms of CET1 because we ended up last year with a 12.1% CET1 ratio when the target is 11. But we know that beginning of 2020, we are going to consume as much as 40 bips of CT1 ratio in order to dismantle partially an internal guarantee mechanism that we had put in place. This is going to boost the profits of Credit Agricole SA, but to reduce a little bit its CT1 ratio, which is perfectly okay, okay. considering our trajectory. And you, you, you put in place new targets last summer, an increase in net profits uh, of more than 600 million euros over three years, cutting costs. How are you progressing against these targets? Well, uh, actually, we are progressing well because the net profit of the listed entity improved already in 2019 by more than 4%. It's now close to 4.6 billion euros, and we are targeting to be at 5 billion in 2022. We want also to post a return on tangible equity above 11%, and already last year, we were at 11.9%. You seem to be benefiting, well, you, you seem to be telling a positive story in various parts of the business yeah. uh, right now, Jérôme. Do, do you benefit from the diversity of your model clearly, versus other French banks? Clearly, the model that is built on a very solid customer base, especially in retail banking activities in France and in Italy, plus the capacity of offering to those customers all the financial services and financial products offer that we can imagine in asset management, insurance, uh, uh, consumer credit, car financing, and so on and so forth, is working indeed very well. Okay, Jérôme, thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. for joining us today. Jérôme Grivet, the CFO of Credit Agricole.